Hey, what's going on, Sec Plus Preppers? This is IT Dojo Security Plus Questions of the Day. I am Colin Weaver. Each day I'm going to give you two practice questions to ponder and contemplate as you continue to prepare for your Security Plus exam. So let's get right to it. Question number one. You've got a switch physically located in your network in a place where potentially unauthorized people can plug into it. Of the listed options right there. Which of them would be ones that you would consider doing to better secure the situation? Pick two. Go ahead and give them a read, click pause, and after you're done, click play again, and we'll talk about the answer. All right, so the first choice says configure an access list on the switch. Um, no. Uh, if the switch is just a layer two switch, which we don't know, or a layer three switch, it could support an access control list, but if it's a layer two switch, it's not gonna go in to support that. Uh, the question didn't give us any indication as to what kind of a switch it is, and so in those circumstances, I just generally assume they mean layer two switch, unless they specifically tell me that I'm working with a multi-layer or layer three switch. So I don't think number one's the right answer. The second option says, put all of the ports on the switch into different virtual LANs. So I guess if it was a 48 port switch, you're gonna do what? Create 48 VLANs and put each port into a different VLAN? Um, no, that's just bizarro kind of behavior. I don't know why you would do something like that. So no, that's not a good answer. Third option says turn on port security and then go in and configure the list of allowed MAC addresses on each of the individual ports. Um, this is absolutely a viable option. Uh, in this day and age, I don't know that it's the best option in the world, but certainly from a Security Plus perspective and certainly still in a lot of people's networks, port security is still widely used. So absolutely, this is one of the choices that you would want to give some consideration to. Uh, the fact that somebody can just walk up and plug into any one of these ports, if you have port security turned on on the port, it's going to prevent them from going in and doing that easily. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that for right now. Next option says, turn on the spanning tree protocol. Uh, absolutely turn on the spanning tree protocol if you want to avoid loops in your switching topology, but if you're trying to physically secure the switch, no. Uh, spanning tree protocol doesn't help you there. Next option says configure strong passwords to control access to the administrative interfaces. Uh, that's generally good advice, but it doesn't pertain to the question. So going in and having you know, Rockstar passwords on, uh, on the switch itself, say on the console port or through the web management interface or something like that, isn't going to do anything to control users physically plugging into the switch. So that's not the right answer either. And then the last choice says set any of the unused physical interfaces to be in, a, in an administratively down state. Uh, this is a good idea. Uh, it's a, the only problem with it is it's a bit cumbersome. So if you go in and say, okay, you know, you know, ports 17 through 24 aren't currently plugged into anything, so I'm going to go into that switch and I'm going to set all those to be disabled or shut down or, or in a down state. Um, that's well and good and that if anybody plugs into those ports, they're not going to come up. But it also doesn't really allow for any kind of dynamic connectivity to those ports either. So if somebody did need to go in and connect to them, an administrator is going to have to get involved. So yes, it's good from a security perspective, although it's not always the best thing from, a, from an ease of use perspective. And so, you know, there's that time honored battle between availability and, and security of, of your system. So, um, so the best answers here in terms of looking at what we got, one would be turn on port security and then configure a list of allowed MAC addresses. And then the other option is to actually administratively shut down uh, the ports on the switch, okay, or the unused ports on the switch. Okay, question number two. Question number two says you have deployed a new server using the cloud services infrastructure as a service model. Now, regarding that server, which of the following statements is true? Okay, go ahead and click pause, give those a read because there's a lot there. Uh, give them a read. When you click play again, we'll talk about it. Okay, first choice says you're gonna need to configure virtual routers, virtual firewalls, and virtual switches in order to support this new infrastructure that you've created. While that's not out of the realm of possibility, the question was specifically asking you about this server. So just creating a server uh, using infrastructure as a service doesn't mean that you're gonna have to go in and create virtual firewalls and virtual routers and virtual switches. So um, while there is some potential truth to it, it's not what we're looking for right here. Second choice says that you're gonna have to keep the operating system on your virtual server patched and up to date. Uh, the same way that you would if it was a physical server that was sitting in your data center. Uh, and this is absolutely true. When you use infrastructure as a service to go in and create virtual servers, uh, they're your servers, okay? They still have to be 
you know, hardened and patched and kept up to date and all the same love that they've always needed, they still have to have. Uh, the only thing that you're missing is the physical part. So uh, the operating system itself is still there, still needs your attention. Third option says that you're going to need to make use of dynamic service provisioning in order to scale your app as, a, as the number of users of the web app increases. Uh, well, that's certainly something that could happen that really kind of falls more into, say, a platform as a service kind of a discussion where you're going in and using, say, a, you're deploying a web app and you're doing it all in the cloud and there's no actual infrastructure that you're going in and dealing with. Um, so while that's all an interesting conversation, it doesn't relate to this particular question. Next option says that you need to go in and define a data region and then uh, delivery options in order to make sure that your, uh, that your data gets delivered in an optimized fashion. Um, this, this is infrastructure as a service stuff, uh, specifically as it might relate to like a content delivery network and making sure that you have uh, the, the fastest possible delivery of data to your, uh, to your subscribers or to your users but it doesn't really deal directly with the server itself. It goes into more focuses on data and the storage of that data and the optimized delivery of it. So while that is also very interesting, it does not relate to the question itself of dealing with the server. Um, so no, that's not the right answer either. Last option says that you're gonna to need to go in and configure a VPN in order to secure the data exchanges that are gonna go from your cloud server that you've created to your local data center servers that you still have. Again, while this is very much a possibility when you get into virtual private cloud type scenarios, um, there's no indication here that we're doing that. All the question asked about was, what do you have to do with this new server that you've created in the cloud? So the best answer from all of those listed is to keep the operating system running on your virtual server up to date. And you can deal with all this other awesome stuff later on. Okay, so that does it. We had two questions today. The first one dealt with physical switch security of how you're gonna go in and keep people from connecting to ports on a switch that they can physically put their hands on um, and keep them off your network. And we saw that just uh, shutting the port down, administratively shutting the port down or using uh, Mac filtering are two possible ways of doing it. There are other ways, but again, that's just what the answer choices gave us. And then the second question went in and dealt with cloud services with infrastructure as a service and saying that you've gone in and deployed a new server using this IaaS model, uh, which of the following were you gonna go in and do? And we saw that you still needed to keep the actual servers themselves up to date from an operating system perspective. So infrastructure as a service does not automatically free you from the need to go in and keep your servers patched and, and, uh, and uh, otherwise hardened, okay? so. I hope you enjoyed these two questions. I hope they were valuable for you as you continue your studying. There's a like button down there. I need you to find it and click on it for me. That would be awesome. Um, and then also click on the subscribe button because I do these questions every single day. And if you wanna keep getting them in order to uh, continue to prep for your exam, then you're gonna to wanna to go in and do that. So I will see you tomorrow.